Jesus envisaged a, a higher level of glory more than his suffering. So he was willing to endure. Now listen to me. That's why I'm saying to you that commitment is the acceptance of pain as a price, as a price one must pay towards the benefit. The reason you are easily most, listen to me, Christians that cannot commit uh, to anything and follow through is a proof they are blind. You ain't saying no nothing. If you knew you were carrying a baby that you must push out in the labor ward, isn't it? What you gonna do? That's why a woman sustains the pain because she's looking beyond this pain. She's actually doing what? She's looking beyond the pain and envisaging the baby. I can't wait to carry that baby in my hands. I can't wait when that destiny of mine is fully fulfilled. I can't wait when I am moving in that power. I can't wait when I stretch my hand like this. Demons begin to cry. I can't wait. Now one must envisage and say, I'm in this labor. The reason I'm fasting, the reason I am forgiving. You see the labor? I mean, you, you see, it takes... When people offend you, it's painful. Someone told me, but man of God, forgiveness is painful. I said, yes. Forgiving those who have offended you is very helpful. And I said to her, my daughter, you are right. My, one of her daughters here in England told me that. And I said, that, I said to her, now you understand forgiveness. It's as painful, but it is rewarding. Because when you forgive your offender, what is the reward of forgiving an offender? God will hear your prayers. What is the a reward of forgiving your offenders? You become like your father. Because forgiveness transforms you into the likeness of Jesus and God. Because Jesus and God forgave the sinner who was not worthy of forgiving. So when you forgive, you become like your father who is a forgiver. So when you release people of their offenses, that's when you are given an opportunity to be conformed into the likeness of God. But however, unforgiveness conforms you into satanic likeness. Bitterness and forgiveness is what transforms you. Sustaining hatred is what conforms you into the character and the nature of the devil. So you are either transformed into his likeness, the likeness of your father in character or you are trans, tra conformed into satanic likeness in nature. The choice is always yours. But here the Bible says I was saying looking unto Jesus like that sunflower. Looking unto Jesus the author and the finish of our faith. What is that that God is telling you? If you're going to run the race and win because remember we are running a race. Every runner runs with patience. They're not telling you a hundred meter sprint. This race is a marathon. In the marathon you run with, that's why they told you in verse 1, run with patience. The rest that is set before you, this rest, you run it with patience. Remember, patience is not about God. Patience is a fruit about you and those around you. The things they do to you. You run with the patience. We are in the most trying moments of our lives where everything can easily annoy you. Where you can put up and pick up a fight from anywhere. That's why here there is God who calls us to focus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, but also to educate our children on identity because Jezebel comes for that to me. This is a season at the same time, an opportunity given to you for Christ to be formed in your heart. The nature of Christ, listen to me. When you forgive your offenders, you rise above them. Forgiveness allows you to rise above your offender. Forgiveness puts you in the, ahead of your offender. So, the sunflower keeps her gaze on the sun not that there are no challenges around but it does not give listen to me maturity is the ability to understand what requires your attention and what does not deal, require your attention 
You need to understand what requires, what demands and requires your attention and what does not require your attention. And I'm saying to you, you must open up yourself. Open up yourself so that the Spirit of God will work in you. This is a season for us to be filled with Him rather than be filled. Listen, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to fill you, you'll be filled with rage. You'll be filled with hatred. You yourself are going to turn yourself into a racist. You, you, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Because before God, there is no, we are all one race, the God race. Satan will feel anything that has opened itself to him. What you've been having. Listen, okay, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Any satanic offer in exchange for what you carry is a proof that the devil has perceived what you carry is of more worth than the offer he's giving you. I hope you heard what I said. Satan will never suggest an offer to you. Unless what you carry is of greater worth than the offer. Normally people don't buy things. <laughs> people don't buy things that they don't perceive to be of greater value than the price. What's the value? Can you tell me the worth of a soul? The price of a soul is the price of the blood of Jesus that purchased it. How much is the blood of how much does the blood of Jesus cost? How much? It is priceless. Let me tell you something. Certain things are priceless. If the blood of Jesus Christ is priceless, the soul of the redeemed is priceless. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The soul of the redeemed is priceless. You cannot put a price to it because it is purchased by the blood of Jesus. If you cannot put a price upon the blood of Jesus, you cannot put a price upon my soul. So whatever offer in exchange for my soul, it is deception. Every attack on a child of God, it is to prove to you, Satan is attacking because he's attacking worth. He wants you to drop the worth the value of what you're holding. And this is what the Jezebelian powers. Some people are selling out because of the offense. What do I mean? Listen to me. No amount of offense should ever or can ever stop me from pursuing my destiny. Some people, the vineyard, Satan is crafty. You will come through an offense that will cause you to give up ministry. Give up your walk with God. Some people say, oh, you know, when I was in church, church people, they offended me, so I gave up on salvation. You gave up on life. You surrendered your inheritance because a certain believer. Don't you realize that all, the church is full of uh, uh, people with uh, um, uh, bandaged heads, broken legs, twisted minds and heads, because it's a hospital. In a hospital, you find all kind of people. So that's why it is the encounters you have with God that teach you to understand nothing. I can't sell out. I can't Time sell out back the hearts. God is in the business. Before a revival comes, hearts must turn. Once your heart is polluted, the place of your prayer what your altar releases is just nuisance noise. No impact. You make prayers that can never transform nothing because you lost your authority. Pain I want you. Is the acceptance, I mean, commitment is the acceptance of pain as a price towards the benefit. Why don't you right now, who for the pain, Jesus Christ, what did he do? endure the cross but he laid down the bible commands us to lay down every weight these five minutes are they worth you talking to god about it checking your heart check yourself has jezebel been trying to hijack your heart what has filled your heart 
right now? Who, who has filled your heart? Or what has filled your heart? Is it hatred? Is it pride? Is it worry? Is it arrogance? Is it lust? What has filled your heart? Lies and lies. Where adultery lies, lies are there. Some of you are busy there. Cheating on your wives. Cheating on your husbands. And you don't know Jesus is coming. Some of you are there. Fornicating, using the lockdown as, a, as an excuse to bow down to Jezebel. That's when you see that she is intentional. 